Hello there everybody and welcome! In this video I got 10 tips, tricks and strategies to help you out when you're new to the game and feeling a little bit lost and uh, there's thousands of questions that might plague you about the game and I hope that these things might help you out and who knows, maybe even the experienced players might find some help or even entertainment out of it. That being said, let's get right into the meat. Let's get started talking about woodcutters. So woodcutters are the most vital resource gatherers in your settlement. And ideally I go for a setup of two camps fully staffed out. If you can use beavers as they have a chance to double the yield with their wood proficiency bonus. And keep these guys working as long as you can afford to. I will talk about hostility management later in the video, so unemploying these guys makes the forest less angry, just as a quick note here on the side. Woodcutter camps can be moved freely. Personally, I love this setting here to avoid glades except for the marked ones, and you can hold down left shift and left click each of these uh, thingies to activate the setting for the entire encampment, so it gets copied on all of your woodcutter camps. Quite nifty, quite useful, and might be helpful for you. So you can move them for free, and you should move them, and beyond that, sometimes some biomes might require you to employ a third woodcutter camp. I had very, very rare moments where I had four woodcutter camps, but that that were probably only one or two or three games in my grand total of I don't know how many games. Most of the time two woodcutter camps staffed out with beavers is all you need. Sometimes if you feel like your wood intake is going too slow, first try to optimize your industries to use less wood and then see if you can employ or build a third woodcutter camp. Happens in some biomes where the wood density ain't that high. Now, number two, Housing. Housing is a dirty cheap way of making your people happy. A shelter houses three people. You see here with the homeless uh, number how many people need a shelter. And in any uh, game I try to get that number down to zero as quick as I can. As like I said, it makes the people dirty cheap happy. If you don't have any other options, you just need to bring up some wood and make them happy like that. It also provides you the option to enhance your hearth to a encampment. As soon as eight people are housed around that, you just need to add in four of these low tier decorations and the hearth produces a plus two resolve bonus. So this is the power of housing alone and it can be repeated with every small hearth that you build outside there. So you can provide a lot of happiness and stability just by housing and hearthing, so to say. So don't miss out that chance. It is really, really powerful. And with Citadel upgrades, when you get more resources, you also um, get to upgrade it even further with more people living there and more decorations. Very worthwhile. Number three, building materials. So the stuff made at the crude workstation is basically the lifeblood of your expansion. Planks, fabric and bricks are needed for basically any sophisticated building later down the road. Practically all the workshops and more advanced buildings require some sort of these materials. Therefore, it is always a good idea to try to get at least one building in your city that has a somewhat decent production of that stuff. And mind you, any building is better than the crude workstation. Even the ones that just have one star here. Mind the difference, yellow star, hollow star. This is even worse than a one star building. So all in all, try to get yourself at least one producer of these materials in every game. You'll notice the difference so quickly because this place, it wastes material. It's a means to an end. You need to build them because otherwise you can't get these materials uh, online. But it is really horrible to, to provide material for an entire city for the entirety of the game just by the crude workstation. And that's true for any of these materials as the ratio of conversion is so freaking horrible that you should really get that replaced as quick as you can. Now, number four, never pick anything without having an idea what you'll be using it for. That goes especially for the reputation bonus cards down here. 
If you don't know anything that you need of these, then just play further. Don't pick anything. Open new glades, uh, explore, open new um, order packs, check out the newest cornerstone. Whatever you do, don't blindly pick to get this done. These things, they don't go bad. Most of the time, you will find some hint, some patch of fertile soil that gives you the idea that you want to draft a farm, some resource that you will find that can be only harvested with a certain camp sword. All of these things, they give you pointers to give you an idea of what you can draft. And if everything else fails you, the previous point, the one about building materials, can help you out too, because, you know, planks, fabric, and bricks are needed in every city, and uh, if you have a decent choice there, it's always a good uh, idea to go for it. After that, food production is also insanely important, but only here again, use food buildings that you also can utilize. You can always click the magnifying glass and uh, check out what these uh, recipes actually use in terms of resources, and if you even can provide. Strongly recommend to check these out in detail. Especially if you are new to the game, the recipes here can have so many substitutions that it's totally worth checking out these um, in detail before you pick anything. And if anything else fails you, tools are also really good to have at least one producer in the city, as these are really, really good to open up caches or resolve events or just sell them at the trader, but I wouldn't recommend that. It's paining me to say that, but they are worth quite a penny. Now, number five, don't fear the dangerous glades too much. These come with a quest that you need to resolve or you will receive a little bit of punishment. Most of the time, you will need to employ two people for uh, some time. You need to use either some refined fuel, some building materials, some advanced um, materials like incense, wine or whatnot. So there is always something different that you need. If you are looking for a safe way, wait for year two, drizzle season, build a trader's camp if you don't have the materials at hand that you need for the event to resolve. Because after the passage of a year, if you only build the trade camp then, the first trader will come almost immediately. You can also call them if you wanted to, but if you just postpone the building of trading post, you can ensure that you get a trader to shop from and these often have the materials to resolve your problem as well so it's always worth it as dangerous glades offer way more building space they offer way better resource nodes most of the time and their their events also provide quite nice rewards when you resolve them and most of the time it ain't that hard to resolve them so number six food so food is really one of the usual suspects when it comes to early game deaths. And as a rule of thumb, keep in mind, every citizen needs roughly two pieces of food per season. The lizard people and the harpies are a tad bit hungrier. They roughly need two and a half to three pieces per season. And that means every citizen is a running cost of food. This city here has 12 citizens. That means we have to have 24 pieces of food per season. So in short, food production is so important in that game. That means keep the gathering camps running. Keep those farms, if you have any fertile soil running, Draft them as soon as you can because food production is really, really good. And the very first buildings that produce some sort of a complex food, that's biscuits and uh, all these things that you see up here. As soon as you find a building that is compatible with your resource patches, go for it because complex food is always a multiplication. You can always get more nutrition out of a food that consists out of these base ingredients than the other way around. And as an added bonus, it makes the people happy. But you will die if you don't focus food production enough. In this regard, try to get yourself a stockpile of 200 to 300 pieces of food. If you are at that point, you don't need to worry yourself too much. But always keep in mind, the more people you got, the more food is necessary and many of these storm events also go directly on the food stockpiles and therefore you now know the numbers 
two pieces of food per person per season, roughly, and that way you can calculate your way out of this misery. Number seven, easy ways to win. So first of all, of course, always try to go for the orders. When you pick orders, always, as a beginner, orient yourself towards what can I fulfill. Don't care too much about the rewards yet, as for starters, it's most important to fulfill the objective so you get the reputation reward and you start winning the game. This is the easiest way of yielding in reputation points. The other easy ways to win are gathering tools and not opening the abandoned cache for a resource, but instead send them back to the Citadel, cash in the money and get that reputation. With the money you can buy from the traders complex foods to make your people happy and overall a Wealthy production of complex foods is also an easy way to win, as well-fed people are happy people. And a combination of these three ways will be a really solid way to aim for to get your first few wins under the belt. So, number eight, fuel. So, wood can be used as fuel and will be used as fuel at the beginning of the game. I strongly recommend you to not waste your starting coal as fuel, the game will do so though, so you either set up the priority of wood higher or you remove, remove the check mark from the coal this way. Either way, don't burn the coal at the beginning. By now, I often open my dangerous glades in year one and resolve many of the events with coal alone, because coal is a problem solver. And in the worst case, it is a iron reserve of fuel that will get you through the game. Anyways, it is always paying off. To have one industry that produces refined fuel, be it a kiln that refines wood into coal, very lucrative conversion by the way, or another building that produces oil, or you can get yourself a coal mine, or you find a, a big patch of sea marrow. Either way, it is very, very important that at some point in the game, somewhere between year four and six, you stop using wood as fuel and use it only as production material for your industries, for new buildings, because otherwise your wood production will not keep up with the hunger of your city and it will get you into problems and therefore some sort of re um, refined fuel, super good. Number nine, Losing ain't bad. This game is meant to beat you the very first runs. I think it is even meant to beat you for the very first dozen runs if you're completely new to the city builder and survival and roguelite genre. So really don't feel bad about it. You will get rewarded. That's the best part about it. The resources you get will give you upgrades at the Citadel which will make you come back stronger for the next time. And the best part about it is the longer you hold out, the more resources you get. So basically, you really get a full-on reward for learning to get a little bit further each game, to get yourself a little bit uh, deeper into the game. And therefore, play the difficulty level that seems fun to you. Don't feel bad about playing on the lowest difficulty levels at all, or just dip into the danger and threats of the higher difficulty levels and don't mind losing at all, because you will get rewarded handsomely for getting your teeth kicked in. So that's something really should be taken into account as with this game you always win basically you never lose you just win harder if you fall if you fill that bar down there you will just get way more resources for that but you will always win something and this is something that you should really get into your mind for this game to avoid frustration because it would be really sad to get frustrated about your game just because of that so number 10 hostility management. You see here the bar, this one is the hostility of the forest and this is basically the main antagonist of the game. To get the hostility down you can unemploy woodcutters, so you see here directly how the bar goes down 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 and you can burn sacrifices at the hearth, very very costly, this is a per second uh, cost, should only be used in emergencies. And there is also lots, lots of other ways to crank around with the hostility. But the really important things that I want to leave in this video meant for beginners, really important is to know the more years, the more hostility. The game will spiral out of control due to that on its own. 
You cannot hinder that. Also, the more glades you open, the more hostility. So don't expand blindly. Do this only when you feel like you need the expansion room. Nothing is killing you faster than just opening one fight after another like they, like they are candy. Then extra hearths lower hostility as well. So expanding your network of these is really paying off. By the way, if you build a new one, it's all about not touching the yellow grid. So you need to space out yourself further. And that is, by the way, why the danger glades are also really, really good for expansion's sake. It will never be possible to outrun the hostility entirely. It will always catch up to you. So that's why you should always try to win in time. You will run out of time with this game. The goal of Against the Storm is not to build a perfect city. It is the goal to build a city that builds up the reputation that you need to win and then it'll provide the resources for the remainder of the cycle and then they will all go back to the citadel anyway so at that point you have already won the game so don't try to mistake this for a classical city builder where the goal is to have a sustainable city and all this is only true for food and fuel production. These are the only things that you can truly get to a stable level. Everything else will most likely spiral out of control one way or another until unless you win fast enough. And I hope this helps you to get your feet into the saddle with this game because it's a lot of fun. It offers a lot of diversity. No run is the same. And I really, really love it for what it does. There's, of course, way more things that you could leave for beginners. Maybe I'll do a part two of this video at some point because there are so many things that I could talk about too. Hotkeys and uh, other notable things. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And check out the description box where you will find my Discord channel where you can hang out with like-minded gamers. Among those, of course, me as well. And my Twitch channel where I stream every Sunday evening and last but not least of course Patreon, Paypal and buy me a coffee. I'd be delighted if you'd give them a look and a big big thanks to all the supporters of the channel. I deeply deeply appreciate your help and a big big thanks to you watching this video until the very end. I really really appreciate and I hope you had a good time and yeah come back soon again. I hope you will enjoy this game a bit but until then bye bye.